When we look at 189 fools, foolishness in the Bible. And I said I've been lacking on this study, which I picked up now. Is we didn't look, I didn't do folly. And now we're going to look at close this study with folly. It appears 37 times in 37 verses. So we got 37 more scriptures to look at. And folly in the Webster's Dictionary is a sea fool. Number one, it's a weakness of intelligence. A, a fool lays up his own folly, Proverbs 13. It's a want of understanding. Imagine a dictionary quote from the scriptures. Number two is a weak observed act, not highly criminal. An act which is inconsistent with the dictates of reason or with the ordinary rules of prudence. And in this sense, it may be used in singular, but is generally in plural. Hence, we speak of follies of youth. And then number three is observed uh, absurd act which is highly sinful. Any conduct contrary to the laws of God or man, sin, scandalous crimes that which violates moral precepts and dishonors the offender. So Shechem wrought folly in Israel. Achan wrought folly in Israel, Genesis 34 and Joshua 7. And then number four is criminal weakness depravity of mind. So when we look at folly, we're going to pick up now, is we're looking at a criminal. We're looking at a violation of God's law and a violation of man's law. And to the moral of no moralness. It's a sin. And imagine Webster's 1828 dictionary telling us it's a sin. And we're going to see that in, in the Bible. And 190th uh, verse in the Bible is Genesis 34, 7. And this is the uh, one that references the, the dictionary game. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they had heard it. Now Shechem had raped their daughter, Dinah. And the men were grieved and were very raw. Because he had wrought folly in Israel. In lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to have been done. So here's a folly. And a man has raped and defiled their sister Dinah. Here is one of the things that we see foolishness with sexual. We see before that rape is foolish. In 2 Samuel 13, 12, 13. And she answered him. Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, seek unto the king, David, for he will not withhold me from thee. So Amnon has the hots for his sister, Tamar. And he has a friend who is not very a good friend and devises scheme to rape. So we have another rape and this will come up in 2 Samuel at the time. Folly is a crime against another and rape is a crime against another. Why don't we use that word when you see a rape in the newspaper? Hey, that guy has committed a folly which is a sin, a criminal act against God. And a criminal act against man. Newspapers wouldn't dare. Wouldn't dare to print something like that. I mean after all that guy's going to hotel prison. Where he's going to have a life of luxury. And he don't have to stand before a court. As a victim will. Well. That's another discussion. 191. Deuteronomy 22-21. So. Folly is not good. And America in the condition she is in England is folly. There are road, loads of sins and moral depravity against God and the citizens thereof. So how would God describe England and America from the Bible? Folly. Deuteronomy 22, 21. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. 
And the men of the city shall stone her with stones that she die. And here's a girl who can't prove her virginity. Because she has wrought folly in Israel. To play the whore in her father's house. Show thou, thou put away evil from among you. So a female that has not proof of her virginity and has sinned in fornication, folly we just seen is rape and folly is fornication. Where does America stand? Where does Hollywood stand? And we're looking at the scriptures and I'm reading to you from a King James Bible and my notes are very few. The scriptures we're looking at now are very plain and to the point that modern Bibles would have to be written to change what we're looking at. And it's not even worth to go to look at what they're saying. That's why we go to Joshua 7 verse 15. In Joshua 7 verse 15, many books away from Deuteronomy, and yet we see, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. Now God had told Joshua and the children of Israel. I believe it's Jericho. When you go Ai. No, Jericho. When you go into Jericho, you can't have none of it. Everything is to be destroyed by fire. So they go into Ai to battle and they lose. And God says you lost because someone has stolen. Someone has violated my word. I told you not to take the cursed thing. He and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has wrought folly in Israel. Achan has sinned against God and gone against the word of God, and the consequences his whole family is going to be killed. They're animals. They're going to be stoned and burned in a heap of stones. Would you not describe Adam and Eve as folly, as God told them not to eat that fruit, and they ate that fruit, and what's the consequences? Death, hell, hospitals, police, rape, stealing from what God said not to take is the sin of coveting and idolatry. Match that with sin. Paul, um, yeah, Paul said that in Romans that coveting is the same sin as lusting, and lusting is the same sin as coveting. They're one together. In Joshua six eighteen, and ye, in any wise, keep yourself from the cursed thing. There's a warning. At least ye make yourselves a curse when ye take of the cursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. And that's what Achan did. He took the curse of thing and the entire people, the children of Israel, have been made a curse and lost the battle and people died. That's a crime against God and that's a crime against the children of Israel. It's a sin. And then Joshua 7, 20-21 And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel. You had opportunity to have that Repent of that. God gave overnight for you to step up to Joshua and say, Joshua, I did it. But you didn't. Joshua had to call the tribes out. Joshua had to call the families out. And God and Joshua had to call you out. And he may say, oh, look, he repented. He had to repent. And thus and thus have I done. Thus and thus. When you repent of your sins, you put down what sins you've done. When I saw among the spoils a godly Babylonian garment, that's it, and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So he knew what he done. He hid it. And it caused the crime of folly to the nation Israel. Now let's take a child 
who has stolen a cookie. Mom walks in the room, he takes a cookie, and he hides it. That's not folly. There's been no crime against only him. Now, the folly would lie in, let's say he's got brothers and sisters. And mom has noticed something has been taken. Everybody, or at least one other than the parties involved, has now had a punishment. Now it's become a folly. But yet stealing itself is a folly because that's against God. It's a sin. And as simple as something as a cookie, big deal. You've also sinned, you've also committed a crime against man because man says, you know, stealing's a crime. And that's exactly what Achan did. Thou shalt not steal. He said, Thou shalt no other gods before me. He had a Babylonian garment and he had silver and gold. Thou shalt not covet, and he covered it. Thou shalt not steal, he stole. When you start break, like I said, I may go into next, I may go into the study of the Ten Commandments. When you break one commandment, you're going to break two, you're going to break three. You're going to eventually break them all. Judges 19.23 And the trouble today's world is there is no folly. There's no consequences. It's your upbringing. It's your where you came from. It's your race. It's your color. It's no, it's a sin. It's a sin against God and a sin against man. And sin is sin. And when you teach this other form of not sinning, then when you get somebody like me or people go out with the gospel and we deal with people, they're not sinners. They can't get saved. And you come along with the prosperity gospel. Well, you know, you've angered God. You made him a little angry. And then, you know, to say this prayer and God will be. And that's foolishness. Judges 19.23 And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them. And said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Seeing that this man is coming to my house, do not this folly. Now this is the same story as Lot and those angels in Genesis and Sodom. These men have come banging on the door of this house, and there's been a man that's come into the, his house, into his presence, and his wife and the servant, and the people come banging on the house, the men want that man for sexual pleasure. As in the days of Lot. So this folly is a, fo it's a folly of another sexual sin. Homosexuality or sodomy. Sodom, sodomy is a folly in the Holy Bible. You're not gay, you're not a lesbian. You are an outright folly and a sinner before the holy God. Unless you repent of your sins and get right. For rejecting Jesus Christ, you'll be cast off in hell forever for your folly. Today, the world, the world, worldwide, has made folly entertaining, has made it so clean and so great. How great you are when you come out of the closet. Not in the eyes of God. Judges 20 verse 6. And I took my concubine, same story, and cut her in pieces. That's kind of gross. And sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel. How would you like to get that in a package in the mail? For they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel and those of Sodomites. And we're looking again as folly as another sexual sin. Judges 19, 23 to 26. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray you do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into my house. Do not this folly. That's what we just looked at. Behold, here is my daughter, a female, and a maiden, and his concubine, a female. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do no so vile a thing. They wanted the man. 
But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her all night sexual and abused her all the night unto the morning. That's the folly. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman into the door in the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. Do you know, well, I, I don't know how you put that, but there are men today, probably happened last night, probably maybe it's happening now, they have abused women. They are sexually abusing women. There are men working with men that's unseemly according to Romans. And they're committing a crime against God and they're committing a crime against the, the government against others it is morally wrong i don't care what the teaching is it is folly and it is sin judges 20 verse 10 judges 20 verse 10 and we will take 10 men of 100 throughout all the tribes of israel and a hundred of a thousand, a thousand out of ten thousand, to fetch victuals for the people that they may do. When they come to Geba of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. And it's the same issues as Judges 19 to 23, 26, and Judges 20 verse 6. It's that sexual sin of wanting to promote sodomy. And abusing a woman to killing her. That's the folly. And the entire nation of Israel has acknowledged it is folly. And yet the world today will not acknowledge it's a folly. It's a sin against God and a sin against man. First Samuel 25, 25. Let not my Lord, talking to David, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, or Nabal. For as his name is, which means fool, so is he, Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of the Lord, the army of David, whom thou didst then. This wicked man that would not help David and his men for their services, David protected Nabal's men. David was a wall and a hedge of protection to the shepherds of Nabal. And his name means foolish. I hope no Christian gets a new name as Nabal. The very fact of the name that this, his parents or his friends gave him was you are a crime against God. And you are a crime against David, man. And he's probably a crime against uh, his wife, Abigail. I, I, I'm going to assume that. I can't prove it. But the very definition, sin, that is the character and the name of Nabal. And God gave him a cold stone heart. Second Samuel 13, 12. 2 Samuel 13, 12. And she answered him, saying, Nay, my brother, and here we go again, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. Again, it's this sin of rape, which we already mentioned before. The forcing of sexual pleasure upon another is folly in the Bible. Now, God has ordained the marriage bed between a husband and wife. But the forcing. We've seen already. There can be rape in a marriage. And it's folly. It's a sin against your wife. And we're not going to look at marriage right now. But. Sexual pleasure is one of the benefits of marriage, and you can also go and promote folly 
in America. Job 4.18 Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. Now, you're going to have to assume we're looking at the angels that went after the devil and Lucifer. That's sin. Because those are the angels that are sin. The ones that left their state to go with Lucifer. The devil, Satan. They committed a crime against their creator, God. And they also committed a crime against man. Man has transgressed against God and against other men by the action of these angels. Again, remember the definition, sin. Job 24, 12. Men groan from out of the city, and the soul of the wounded cried out, Yet God layeth not folly to them. In an earthly sense, some men are not punished for their sins here on this side of eternity. We got a famous man, the name is dying out, I, I, I have seen, I'm using an illustration, but Jimmy Hoffa. No one knows who, what, where, why about Jimmy Hoffa. And for the crime, if any, to Jimmy Hoffa has not been produced in an earthly judge. And if there have been crimes, there's been no one prosecuted and put to trial for their crime. There are people who've gotten away with crimes on this earth, worldwide, and have been guilty beyond a shadow of doubt. And yet for whatever reason, whatever reason, the multiple reasons there are, justice has not been served. Folly has been a word of sin. Men cry out for vengeance. And God will judge all at either judgment, saved or lost. The judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Christian, if you have not repented of your sins after salvation, and you have been folly, God will lay them up at the judgment seat of Christ. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. And I know some Christians who have committed vile, wicked folly of the sexual nature. And have repented and got right with God. There are plenty of Christians out there today, sexual, immorality, sins, coveting and stealing, that have not repented. And they will show up as wood, hay, or stubble. It's that simple. Sin is sin no matter what color you make it. Or how less you make it. We're going to look at one more. Number 200. Number 200 mark until we know where we are next week. Job 42 verse 8. Now we've gone through a whole study and I have found myself guilty of being a fool, being foolish, acting foolishly, and a fool. Now I'm trying to teach us, you know what? We must come to God in the sin of folly that we do. You say, well, what sin can a Christian do of the sexual nature that we've been studying about folly? Plenty. 
Jesus said, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And yet we are in a realm of women attracting men all around. Billboards, advertisements. We have sinned, we have stolen, we have taken things, we have stolen time from our bosses, we have stolen time from God. That's something we should be able to have done for God, we wasted it. We commit sins of folly, sins in general, against the God of the creation. And we sin against other people. Therefore take unto you, Job 42 eight, now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept. Least I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have spoken of me the thing which is right. Have ye not spoken the thing which is right, like my servant Job? 42 chapters. We have a book where Job is getting hammered by three friends. The three friends of Job are just hammering. Now they said things that were right and true. But they said things that were not so and not true of Job. And I can take the scripture of those men and I can apply it true application but not to Job so folly is misrepresentation of Job's three friends had spoken against him and as a Christian we have never ever spoken of misrepresentation have you ever misjudged someone that's folly. Have you been ever the wrong character of somebody? That's folly. That's a sin. It's a lie. And thou shalt not bear false witness. That's another one of the big ten. So folly, now we're not under the law, but the law shows me who I am. Even as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, that law shows me I am a sinner, and I am still sinning. I'm not happy. And when I go to the epistles of John, it says, if I sin. It says, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. If I say I have no sins, I, I deceive myself, and I make God a liar. Because God wrote, thou art a sinner. And if you can get through the whole study of the fool and say, I came out clean. And now we're looking at folly. Come on, you can't tell me you've never misrepresented somebody in your life. You've never judged somebody wrong. Never. You've never taken anything. You have never lied about anything. Oh, we're folly. And we got to confess that sin of folly. 